Hello all, a very good day. As humans, we are accustomed to visualizing the data in two-dimensional or three-dimensional. And it get, gets really tough and confusing when the number of dimensions increases to 4D, 5D or even more. And when we work in deep learning, the number of dimensions the data has is humongous. Say for example of simple MNIST image which is 28 by 28 and it amounts to a dimension of 784. And what if you, if you want to visualize the high dimensional features of a neural network, say BGT16, it has 4096 dimension. So what shall we do? Well, researchers have come up with very interesting techniques like PCA and TC, which can reduce this high dimensional data to two dimensional or three dimensional where we can visualize it. Well, uh, there are a number of libraries and codes to do that, but I'm going to do that using our favorite TensorFlow. So I'm going to use TensorFlow version two and I'll be using its TensorFlow projector tool to project this high dimensional feature in 2D and 3D where we can easily perceive the relation between the, between the features in the feature space. And we'll do it for the customs data step by step. So let's get started. Uh, so let's get started uh, with this visualization. So basically the pipeline would look something like this. We'll have some form of data. It could be image, it could be word, NLP data, it could be any numeric data, and we'll get features from this data. So using any of the network like VGG, ResNet, LSTM, word 2 vec This uh, feature vectors would be stored as some log file, which will be projected on the TensorFlow to visualize it. And in this example, I am uh, going to use VGG16, and the architecture is pretty simple. So you just will, what we'll do, we'll pass our, you know, custom image here. And instead of using, you know, this uh, output, we'll get rid of this output layer, and we'll get features from this uh, FC4096. This will be 4096 dimensional features. And this, we are going to store it in some checkpoints, and this will project it on the TensorFlow. Now, for the first thing, my data, it's a, it's a very, it's a toy data of 400, of 100 each in classes, cats, dog, horses, and human. And first, I have to create an annotation file. So, I'll have this, uh, you know, uh, image name and the labels and class names. So, let's do that. So, first. basically, uh, you know, the goal is that we'll have this high dimensional data. It could be this images that you see on the screen, or it could be a vector. And we want to reach something here, like we can project this high dimensional data in 2D and 3D and visualize them. So that's the goal. And let's see what are the steps that we can take to achieve this, reach from there to there. So this is my uh, working directory. So this is the folder and I have this data folder where I have four categories of data, 100 images in each. And yeah, so I'll just delete this old stuff first so that you see everything from scratch. So there are three files or scripts that we need to run. One is to prepare the annotation file. Now, if you already have it, it's well and good. It will be used to prepare the metadata uh, file, which I'll talk about a bit later. And then one is the features file that we have to save. Uh, we have to get the features or feature vector or that high dimensional vector that we want to visualize or the embeddings that we want to visualize. Now, if you already have it for yourself, for your data, then no need to use this. And then the main script is once we have these features, how we can visualize these embeddings. Okay, so I'll go step by step. First is preparing the CSV file. So this is nothing but uh, having a CSV file with image name and the corresponding labels and class names. So I have three libraries like uh, the OpenCV, NumPy and Pandas. So I'll simply list out, let me run this code. I'll just import the libraries. And I'm using spider editor here. And so I will just list out all the data directory. And then this is the dictionary mapping the image, uh, yeah, the class name to the class labels. And then I'm creating a data frame uh, for with three headings, like image name, labels, and class name. And then here we are looping over every image name. And for each of the image name, uh, we are getting their labels and class name and appending it to this data frame. And once we have this data frame, prepared let me run this once we have this data frame prepared so it says uh, you know loading the different uh, folders we will simply save it as a csv file okay and it will be saved here you can see there's the image name the labels and the class names so the cats the dogs the horses and the humans the four class that we are using for uh, our demo example 
Now, once we have this, let's go to the save features file. Now, again, if you already have the features, you need not use it. But here, I don't have the features. I just have the images. So I'll be using of this self VGG16 provided by tensorflow.keras. And I'll be getting the features from the second last layer. And so let me just uh, import this libraries here. I Let me import it so that we'll see. Yeah, and now let me load the model from VGG, VGG 16 model. Now here what I'm doing, since I don't need the last layer, I'm creating a custom model. Then from the old model, I'm simply adding all the layers except the last layer. Okay. So if you remember, I showed you the diagram where, you know, I'm getting features from the second last layer, the 4096. So now uh, I'll cut out the last layer and I'll simply have this. So I can also show you here custom model dot summary. And so I'll have just the, you know, 4096 feature vector. Now I'm going to just read this uh, annotation file uh, with pandas. Now this is my uh, get, getting image features function. So simply I load the images, I pre-process them in a form that is required, and then I get prediction from the custom model, which will be a 4096 dimensional feature and then I return the feature. Now one thing to note is your feature should be in the size of number of data, number of samples and the feature size. Now had it been any convolutional layer, you know convolutional layer will have shapes of a multiple dimension rather than just one dimension. So you can simply multiply those other dimension and flatten it and you can get the shape of this form of number of data into feature size. So you can use this uh, line when you have you're taking output from the convolution layer to visualize. Now once, uh, let me call this function, run this function. And then I define an image features list, which will be holding all the features of all the images. So simply I'm going to loop, so over this image names, and I'm going to get the features and append it, okay? So, yeah, it will, take some time so I'm I'll just pause it for a while till it extract all the features so uh, my feature uh, feature vectors have been extracted and I'll just convert it in array and I will delete the list so that my memories get freed and now if you if you just try to see the shape of this image features or like the feature vector shape is in the form of 401 comma 4096 so what we want is in the form of number of samples uh, comma number of features so i will simply do a roll axis and then i will get rid of the zero at dimension and i will get my image features in the shape that we want so now it's in the shape of number of samples, number of features. So this is the extra part. If you already have it, uh, just need to prepare it in this format, any of your data, any of your features. And now I'm going to save it. So you can save it in TXT file, uh, but pickle file is much better. It, it compresses it and takes less space. So I'm going to dump it in a pickle file. And you can see here, my feature vectors 400 samples.pkl is created. Now we are done with the preparatory steps. We have the annotation file. We have the feature file. Now let's move to visualizing the embeddings. Okay, so I'll restart this kernel here. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to import a projector function of the TensorBoot plugin. And then uh, for the first, we need to define the uh, directory where we'll be saving all the checkpoints that we need to project. And here I'm giving it as embedding logs. And this uh, this function will create this directory if it's not there. So let me simply import and create this embedding logs directory. Okay, it's taking some time. But the next step, once uh, you know this gets created, is to prepare, okay, it's here, embedding logs and it is empty for now. Once it gets created, we need to prepare two additional file. So one is this metadata file, which will help us to assign labels or the names to the vector. So if you see this cats or this dogs, so this name we have to mention here. We have to give that in this file, what name we want to see it here, or what name we want to assign to our features. Okay, so here what we'll do, we'll simply 
load our pandas uh, annotation file with the pandas library and then we'll create a new file called tsv tab separated value which will have two columns class and the names and then i'll be zipping over you know all my so in my <coughs> annotation file i have defined labels and class name so i'm going to just loop over this and then i'm going to add it to this metadata file and then i'm going, simply going to close it okay so if i run this you will see a metadata.tsv file will be created here and it will look like this class and names that's all so and the next thing that we want is to create a sprite image so basically sprite image is something like this so whatever images you have it will be uh, created in this format all together and this will be saved in the embedding blocks and this will help us to project and also visualize the images that you can see here beside the feature vector you can you, you can also see the names and you can also see the images and if you don't use this then you'll simply see this but if you use a sprite image then you can also see the images along with the uh, names and the labels okay cool so i'm simply going to just load read all the images uh, i have 400 images then this is the function to prepare the sprite image so this you can directly use it no need to you know go through it in detail and then i'll call this function and i'll save this uh, sprite image here so this is our sprite image uh, i don't think it will open here oh yeah so this is your sprite image so we have all the 400 images in the form of thumbnails now we are done with all our preparatory stuff now let's get to the main thing so what we'll do we'll simply load this pickle file first of all as feature vector and our shape is you know number of samples and the feature is 4096 for each of the sample then uh, <clears throat> we'll assign we'll create a variable tensorflow variable called feature and uh, that will be created from this feature vector that we have read now the one of the main thing okay i'll come to that so now let's create a checkpoint uh, with the embedding being the features for the checkpoint and we'll name that checkpoint as embedding.ckpt and it will be in our log directory which in our case is the embedding logs and uh, yeah here you can see the files being created now we'll create a object for this projector class and then we'll add the embeddings and this embedding.tensor name so one thing is we have to suffix this line or it won't work in tensorflow version 2 so this is important i was struggling with this so if you don't add this it won't work for the tensorflow 2 right now that's what i read uh, if there is some other thing then kindly let me know but that's how it worked for me so just, just give embedding.tensor name as this and the metadata path is simply the metadata for class.tsv so i'm not giving the full path because i'll be running from here and then the sprite image and i'm simply to add this uh, sprite image and then this is to use the projector to visualize the embedding in the uh, by giving this log directory and the config that we created so now we have everything that we need to run this uh, projector to visualize our 4096 dimensional data so what we're going to do we're going to simply uh, let me open a new anaconda prompt and let me activate my environment uh, that's my environment and let me traverse to where i have this and if you see this is my directory with everything so what you have to do so either you can type you know simply tensorboard tensorboard minus minus log directory equal to embedding emb embedding logs and minus minus port because i'm already using 6006 i'll give this 7 but for me yeah this is somehow not installed directly it's through tensorflow so another thing is you can just type python minus aim tensor board dot main minus minus log directory equal to embedding logs and minus minus port equal to 6007 for me by default it is 6006 so it will take some time to create and uh, yeah because i don't have the gpu 
mm, give it few more seconds so it's running at this so now let me just copy this and go to my browser so i'm already running a board on 6006 so i'll simply run it on 6007 okay so this you should refresh it then it will work and you can see your projector is being loaded and now your 4096 dimensional features is projected on the tensor board now this is the pca it tries to maintain this global structure so you can see all the horses are kind of in this location the humans are here and if i project here the dogs are here the cats are here and since we prepare this metadata file if you remember we can search it by name so if i type humans you can see all the humans being uh, shown here and then you can even isolate those uh, human only the human samples and see how they are and or here we can have all this uh, show all data and instead of name then you can also search by class label so if i give a zero then the zero are the cats the cats get highlighted if i give class one then you can see the dogs and then you can isolate them and whatsoever and as i said uh, you can also uh, like zoom in select some points like 93 points and then isolate them and do your visualization either through pca tsni or whatever and then there is this uh, night mode and then this uh, whether you want to enable or disable the you know the sprite image here and if you disable it you will simply see the names and not the images okay so this is pca you can uh, also go for tsni tsni tries to maintain this you know uh, local cluster that's why if you see here uh, it has clustered into the cats and then the humans and then the dogs and the horses so uh, the vgg is a good model so the features that it has learned is quite discriminative in the feature space and that's how you can you know visualize for your data as well so it could it not be images it could be any feature vector from nlp as well and you can use it so i think uh, yeah that's all i wanted to, to discuss and also i have created a, a github where I've given the library version I use and the commands and also all the scripts and even uh, the PKL file and the uh, embedding logs that I created. I'll post that also so you can simply replicate it. So that's that's all for now from here. Uh, I hope you learned something yeah, and, and it's uh, useful. Quickly, I wanted to also say that just there are so many other features that you can try out. So just try it yourself. You know, there are UMAP also and you can also do your uh, custom custom model to uh, reduce this dimension and visualize it here. And yeah, there are for TSNI also, there are so many parameters that need to be varied. So you need to play with it and you can visualize in 2D format, 3D format and you can zoom in and actually see all those features and you know it's cool to play also but yeah <laughs> there are so many other things that you can do so kindly explore it i i that's not the motive of this video uh, it was just to show you how to make it run so but just try it out and yeah good luck